So you can influence some people for the good. But the evil that you do is also going to put an influence on them as well. And Israel, man, they, Judah couldn't break away from it. They, they could, but they didn't. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just up here just blowing smoke. I don't know. Just, you know, that's whatever. Same old, same old, right? Church, we're going to get hear the word of God. We're going to get warm. We're going to get stirred up a little bit, you know. Leave, come back the same way again. Unchanged. How many times God is going to extend our time and give us more time and make time and give us more grace to recover ourselves from the stupidity, from the absolute ignorance of our life? But that's who he is. I want to read to you the prayer of Manasseh, and that's all I'm going to do, and I'm going to let you go home. I'm not going to expound on it out of the Apocrypha. I'm just going to read it to you. And I will say this to you, brothers and sisters, that what I'm about to read to you has been used by the church for 2,000 years as an example of contrition, repentance, a desire to be reconnected to God. Christians in the church who have failed God 2,000 years have prayed this prayer with the hope, God, if you forgave Manasseh, you will forgive me. God, I want to be reconnected to you. Hallelujah. God, I need to have your spirit again. I don't want to be religious. I need your spirit, God. I need you to save me for 2,000 years. The church has prayed this prayer, an example to get back to God. It's like the great prayers of Psalm 51 that David prayed. But anyway, I'll read it to you and I'll let you go home. Oh, Lord, almighty God of our ancestors, of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and of their righteous offspring. This is considered to be the prayer that Manasseh prayed that is recorded here that he prayed in 2 Chronicles 33. Obviously, he did not write this. But a scribe took it and he wrote it because the Bible said that he prayed. O oh Lord, Almighty God of our ancestors, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of their righteous offspring, you who made heaven and earth with all their order, who shackled the sea by your word of command, who confined the deep and sealed it with your terrible and glorious name, at whom all things shudder and tremble before your power, for your glorious splendor cannot be borne, and the wrath of your threat to sinners is unendurable. Yet immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy. For you are the Lord most high of great compassion, long-suffering, and very merciful. And you relent at human suffering, O Lord, according to your great goodness. You have promised repentance and forgiveness. To those who have sinned against you. And in the multitudes of your mercies. You have appointed repentance for sinners. So that they may be saved. Therefore you O Lord God of the righteous. Have not appointed repentance for the righteous. For Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Who did not sin against you. They did but anyway. It has to be covered. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who did not sin against you, but you have appointed repentance for me, who am a sinner. That's the way Manasseh looked at it. For the sins I have committed are more in number than the sand of the sea. My transgressions are multiplied. Oh, Lord, they are multiplied. I am not worthy to look up and to see the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. I'm weighed down with many an iron fetter so that I am rejected because of my sins and I have no relief for I have provoked your wrath and have done that which is evil in your sight setting up abominations and multiplying offenses and now I bend the knee of my heart when he says I bend the knee of my heart he says I am in deep contrition deep repentance I bend the knee of my heart. The 
The footnote here says a special depth of feeling. Imploring you for your kindness. I have sinned, O Lord. I have sinned. And I acknowledge my transgressions. I earnestly implore you. Forgive me, O Lord. Forgive me. Do not destroy me with my transgressions. Do not be angry with me forever or store up evil for me. Do not condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will manifest your goodness. For I am unworthy as I am. You will save me according to your great mercy. And I will praise you continually all the days of my life. For all the host of heaven sings your praise. And yours is the glory forever. Amen. God gives every one of us time. He makes time. He extends time. He stretches time to give us the opportunity for victory and to be restored and to be recovered. Would you stand? Lord God, thank you for making time for us tonight to show us by example this man, Manasseh, An example of how merciful and how gracious you are to those that come to you in deep contrition and repentance. That you are willing and able and desire to forgive our sin tonight. I ask you God to cleanse me personally of all sin. Cleanse me Lord of every evil thought and every evil word and every evil action. That I have committed against you. Lord thank you for forgiving me my sins tonight. I rejoice in you God today. In Jesus name. Jesus said this one day. He looked at a bunch of religious hypocrites. Claimed to be saved in the church. Religious hypocrites. And he said the sinner and the harlot. Enter into the kingdom of heaven before you do. Because you thought you were worthy. And when they came to God they knew they weren't. And they had to fall on the mercy of God almighty. In order to be saved. God came into this world to save sinners. Paul said, of which I'm the chief of sinners. Paul said, line me up on judgment day. I'm the furthest from heaven and the closest to hell. I'm the chief of sinners. But he said, God showed mercy to me. God saved Paul and Paul preached like no man has ever preached. Because he was thankful for what God did for him. Amen. Father God tonight. Thank you once again for having mercy upon my soul. Extending my days. Lengthening my time. Giving me another opportunity to be here tonight God. To recover myself from the snare of the fowler. To make myself right with you before your throne. To put my sin under your blood Jesus. To cleanse me and be renewed by the power of your spirit that I might have the promise of eternal life. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters. As I've been going through the Apocrypha, I've been taking book by book by book in an order. And because I didn't have time to get into a lengthy book, I went to the next one, which was the prayer of Manasseh. I thought it was Psalm 151, 
I was going to preach that, but then I found the prayer of Manasseh was before that. And so I studied, I prepared for this tonight. What I'm saying to you is your pastor did not pick and choose this message for a specific time God did. God knew who would be here tonight. And he made time. For you. Because that's the kind of God he is. And I was in that. I went in there. I just started praying, man. You know, sinner than I am. I just went before God. And I started praying. And man, he started speaking to me. About how he makes time for his people. It's illustrated here. And it's extends the time in order for us to be recovered and he speaks to me about that pastor that was recovered even though half the church hated him and walked out that's the kind of God we serve and the more he talked to me the more depth of emotion and feeling I had because he's just he's just that good and I'm telling you tonight, brothers and sisters, if you're out of the way, if you're not saved tonight, tonight you can be. God gave you time. There are some that are not here tonight that you love, family members, children that are not here. And your burden, man. Your heart bleeds. <laughs> People look at you, and on the outside, you're happy. But on the inside, every day of your life, you live with a sorrow and a grief. You grieve over your children. And there's nothing in this world can make you happy. No money. Nice house. Nice cars. Nice clothes. Nothing can make you happy. Because on the inside you're empty. But I preach this message to you tonight to give you hope. That God can bring them home, brothers and sisters. He can bring them home. Hallelujah. Because that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. Grief is so great, man. You get to a place you don't even want to live. telling you you don't even want to live and the only thing that you can think about is Lord I got to keep living because if I don't keep living I might miss them coming home and I want to be there when they come home and that's what keeps me going and that's what keeps some of you going because you've thought about you hurt so much you thought about not living no more. You're praying over them, God. Don't let them die before they come home. Don't let them be lost. God, I know they're out there right now living for the devil. Lord, we see the pictures. We see it. They're, they're proud of it. We see them partying and they send the pictures out to social media. Now how proud they are living that life. And you see your children doing that. And you just want to die. I'm preaching to you tonight a message that will encourage you. And when you see it, it'll so impact your heart, it'll cause you to weep. 
So keep going, Mama. Keep going, Daddy. Keep going, Grandma. Keep going, Grandpa. Don't end your life. Keep holding on to God. Say, Lord, I don't know if I can take it anymore. I don't know if I can bear it anymore. I don't know if I can keep going anymore. It's so bad, God, at home. It's bad, God, at home. The church doesn't even know how bad it is. God says, I'm going to give it time for recovery, for victory. I'm going to give it time to get right. I'm going to give it time to be restored. Keep going. Keep going. Hold on to God. That's all you can do is hold on to God. God before you who can be against you I say to you tonight nobody knows the pain you're in right now nobody knows it except maybe a few Lord God I pray tonight for a Hezekiah and a Hespa tonight. Pray for them. People like them. Encourage and strengthen them tonight. Bless them, Father. Let them, let this word, God, let them be connected with this word and let this word connect with them. And walk out of here with hope. You have set this man as an example of your mercy for the whole church for 2,000 years to see that when a person is contrite and repents and gets right and wants to come home to you, you will in no wise cast them out. In the name of Jesus. And when they come home, they're not going to be, they're not going to have it all together. They're not going to, uh, there's going to be some things that you're going to look at and you're going to see. And you're just going to have to keep your mouth shut. It's going to have to say, God, you know. <laughs> I can't even say anything, God. You know. I just want to say this to the church. I appreciate you tonight. My children came home. They're here tonight. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate y'all because y'all genuinely love them. And you lined up to greet them. <laughs>